When I started tap dancing in France 37 years ago, there was nearly no tap culture in Europe. Few were the tap teachers traveling the whole continent to spread knowledge coming from America, the birth land of tap. Internet did not exist and the only way to learn about the form was to go to America and seek for the masters. When I first set to the New World in 1988, I had no idea my journey into the tap culture would keep me in New York over 20 years and turn into a career that went way beyond my dreams as a young girl coming from the south of France. It has been a path filled with spectacular opportunities all around the world and the recognition I could not have hoped for. Yet, I always felt a form of emptiness due to the persisting difficulties to bring back my art towards my homeland. Today, however, TAP is going global. Massive TAP communities have grown in South America, Japan, Australia. Europe also is catching up with the global TAP movement, adding its own diversity to the mix. Jimmy Sled Institute, started in Barcelona in May of 2010, as an educational project which consisted in monthly conferences, workshops and tap jams. It came up in the midst of a changing tap landscape in Europe, a full-blown world crisis, and at a turning point in my life and career. My interest for flamenco and Arabic music had brought me to Barcelona five years previous to Jimmy Slat Institute's start. Through the gracious fundings of the John Simon Guggenheim Foundation, I had been developing new work with a small company which I had formed with Catalan tap dancers. The work toured several European countries, the east coast of the United States and Canada, generating more fundings until the crisis made itself severe, particularly in Spain. In early 2008, the show stopped in the depth of the crisis. I gave birth to a child born with Down syndrome, and so all my activities stopped. Producing work on this side of the water simply became a utopi. How was I to reinvent myself a career without the time to manage my projects, without the space to practice, without the resources that the New York dance and music scene had provided for my expression during 20 years, without my family and lifelong friends nearby without an organized community to team up with, without the possibilities to keep a social network up to date because of all the limitations that being the mother of a special need child implied. I had just turned 40, the reality of being one of the few established female hoofers of my generation in the field, if not the only one, added to my solitude and my precarity. Teaching became my only alternative, but who to teach, how to teach, and what to teach that could be meaningful in this new environment. At the same time, and paradoxically, given the crisis, a new tap festival craze was happening all across Europe. This modern phenomenon was not providing opportunities to produce shows, nor did it expand the visibility of the art form beyond our inner tap communities. But it had begun to create a whole new generation of dancers wishful to embrace this hoofer's path. The trip to New York was no longer a necessity for young European dancers wanting to learn tap. For the first time, American dancers started crossing the ocean our way, not to teach, but to learn about tap on the old continent. When I decided to settle in Barcelona after my child's diagnosis, the local dancers who were the closest to the teaching I had offered in the past years were curiously not the ones I had officially trained Like myself, they were immigrants. Like myself, they constantly had to improvise their lives to find the means to sustain their dream of being tap dancers. Like myself, they understood that solidarity and consistency were the only way for tap to exist. Ludovico Mravela and Ivan Bouchain hailed from Mexico. They wanted to learn jazz, tap and improvisation, an interest becoming rare among a generation looking towards pop music as the new tap outlet and so they asked me to teach them at a small civic center downtown Barcelona. By doing so, the seeds of Jimmy Slade Institute were planted. 
A few years later, their dedication and personal practice translated into an understanding of the form, a musicianship and producing skills that went way beyond the dancers of their generation on local ground. They graciously volunteered to help launch Jimmy Sled Institute's initial program using a stage donated to me by the Fridona Art Base. Two years later, I was able to move into my own space. Having to face the studio's rent on my own also meant to multiply classes and workshops. The results went way beyond my expectations. Dancers traveled from all over the world, US, Europe, Canada, while very little promotion was made. I remodeled the space, broke walls, expanded the dance surface, comforted with the thought that Jimmy Slot Institute did have a meaning for many more people than I had initially suspected. Today, these personal, artistic and professional experiences have shaped into a yearly TAP training program, which we are extremely thrilled to present to the world's TAP community. Jimmy Sled Institute will be welcoming on its teaching board both young and mature TAP artists who are making a difference by creating original work, collaborating with live music, traveling the world, expanding the visibility of TAP beyond classrooms and beyond the strictly TAP environment. Thus, providing the most necessary tools to any aspiring TAP professional. How to dance greatly while knowing how to articulate a project and create more opportunities while generating outreach actions that will serve themselves and the community all together. We hope that the masters, especially my mentor Jimmy Slide, would be proud of our initiative. May our work keep on honoring their memory and help nurture the future of our cherished art form. <laughs>